second we have here between NFC North rivals, the Vikings and Lions facing off in uh, Minneapolis. Uh, this game started off very heavily towards uh, Minnesota, but the Lions defense really woke up in the second half, holding him to zero points in the entire second half. Jared Goff leading a four-minute drill drive to only give the Vikings like, what, 20 seconds left. Uh, for their final drive, uh, really well executed in second half, especially for this Lions team scoring two touchdowns, being a two-point conversion as well. Um, really putting the game away here. We can take a look at the scoring summary here to see how they got their points. We start with the Dalvin Cook uh, run to get their uh, the scoring going in the game, then a Matthew Ray field goal, then Justin Jefferson pass. Uh, I think this happened early, and then there was a long time where neither team could really get anything going, but they did get the field goal before half to get to Detroit, so... Uh, really opened that back up, and then they get the ball and get the two-yard touchdown run with a two-point conversion made to tie the game back and forth a bit, and then the Duke Johnson touchdown run to give them the lead, and that gives them the game. Uh, overall, we're going to take a look at the stats here. Uh, neither quarterback looking particularly good. Uh, Cousins maybe having his best, his best game of the year with a touchdown, no picks, just low yards, but I'm guessing 25, yep, yeah, is the longest pass. So both these guys have a bit more yards on the table. Uh, but Cousins is overall pretty solid. It just seems like their offense really spun in place in the second half. A lot of uh, drives ending at like the 45-yard line when that's not close enough for a field goal. Dalvin Cook was pretty all right. 3.8 yards per carry at the touchdown. Uh, then Duke Johnson with seven carries and the touchdown as well. DeAndre said not a very good game for him with three yards per carry. Uh, but this Lions team was able to get enough done on offense to uh, get the job done today. Tyrell Williams, again, playing awesome. Uh, something he's done every game of the year, pretty much, uh, that he's played. Just been a very solid wide receiver one for them. Olusavi Johnson, seven catches. James Washington, three catches, 82. Still not having that big game yet for the Vikings, but, uh, again, still trying to find his footing on the team. Uh, Nico Collins, Justin Jefferson had the touchdown catch. Um, and then, yeah, uh, who else do we got here? Uh Harrison Smith leading the way with nine tackles, as well as Troy Dye. Uh, Hercules with two tackles for loss. And Quiddy Pay also had two tackles for loss. A bunch of players at one. And then for sacks, lots of sacks here. J.O.K. with two. Romeo Alfuaro with two. Tack McKinley with two. Jalen Phillips with one. Michael Pierce with one. And Will Harris with a half sack. Lots of sacks for this Lions team. The team is used to having a lot of sacks on them. Uh, kind of nice to get a little bit of uh, revenge here in this one uh, for all the sacks that they've endured this year. Uh, with uh, eight sacks for them in the game. So, good to see their pass rush get nasty. Like, no interceptions in the game. Uh, the pass deflections. Taven Young had a very nice game. Um, and four stumbles. There's one of those. So, that is going to probably wrap us up here. Let's take a look at field goals. Uh, Matthew Wright was perfect on his kicks. Uh, and then Bailey didn't even attempt one. And then for the punt. So yeah, that's gonna do it for us. We'll catch you guys in the next game. Uh, what a game here for the New Orleans Saints. After giving up last week and uh benching Jimmy Garoppolo, they decided to play him this week and he shows them that they should not have benched him. Uh lucky break for the Giants last week. They got their first win, but uh the the Jimmy G led offense here for the Saints much more efficient and able to put up 30 points on a Washington defense that is still supposed to be very good. Uh, but again, trying to figure out what's going on here. I got a little bit of the hiccups going on. <laughs> it's all that cheap beer, I guess, what my dad would say. Um, but as we move in to the scoring summary here, we can start uh, Callaway touchdown catch, Jesse James touchdown catch, the Trey Lance run, but then Chase and Marcus Callaway touchdowns uh, really put the game out of reach to start. Uh, then the uh, Washington field goal, Washington touchdown from Trey Lance, trying to make things more interesting, but it was far out of reach at this point. And Sloman does get the uh, last field goal of the game to make the score 30-17. to 17. Into the offense here, 123 pass rating for Jimmy Garoppolo. 18 for 23, 193 yards, four touchdowns. Did throw a pick, but... When he had as good of a game as he had, even with the 25 yards being the longest, he definitely take that. Had an awesome game. Trey Lance had his first rookie game of the year, but even then, as a rookie game, only throwing one pick, he didn't lose in the game as much uh, as you'd uh, necessarily say. But Kamara, who baby, Kamara was back this week. More than two yards per carry, but they leaned on him a little bit more. Uh, 
really was awesome in the rushing attack here, consistently moving the chains. Gibson was as good on an average basis, but just didn't get the carries. Trey Lance had a solid game running the ball, and Javante Williams get, didn't get nine carries, also being pretty efficient with those. Uh, then for the receiving game, Marcus Callaway. What a game. Two touchdowns, eight for 83. Terry McCorn at seven catches, but couldn't get the yardage. Kurt Samuel, kind of similar, but had uh, a pretty good first game here for this Washington football team. Jamar Chase getting a touchdown. Steven Sims as well, continuing his great season. And Joseph James' only catch was the 18 yard touchdown reception. Kamara only get involved with one catch, though. So, maybe something that they could improve on even as we go into further games. Then we look at the defense here. Boye and Curl getting those main tackles is never great. Sheldon Rankins, two tackle for loss. Holland getting involved, one tackle for loss there. Uh, let's see, any sacks we have in the game? Shy Tuttle, Matt Ioannidis, and Cockrell, and Beagle on a blitz likely combined for a half sack. Then Jeremy Reeves and CJ Gardner-Johnson with the picks. And any pass deflections, Jordan Fuller, Quan Alexander, Rankins at the line of scrimmage got one. And no forced fumbles, no safeties, no blocked, no touchdowns. So that's going to do it here. Thank you guys for... Soon again, we will keep chugging along our 1 p.m. games as we move on to the next one. Buddy, uh, just breaking out laughing, basically from the first quarter watching this one. Uh, I think the first quarter was 3-2. to two. Uh, <laughs> The so safety. Uh, it was just so fitting. I Honestly, this game was very fun to follow along with. Patriots do get the win, so it's not that funny. It would have been absolutely hilarious if the Texans would have just won this game anyway. But it was very competitive. Back and forth, could have really gone either way. Uh, honestly, a game I wish we were watching, as weird as it was. Um, but we'll start here. Yeah, me too. <laughs> the safety. <laughs> um, and then you get the Duke Johnson touchdown. Um, make the kick, whatever, nine points. Hey, they had nine, weren't they? That's weird. I don't remember that. Whatever. <laughs> it's, again, weird game. They scored 14 there in the. Uh, quarter uh, for them, and it was really looking like they might run away with it, but Cam Newton uh, able to lead a last uh, hurrah on the two-minute drill, able to close the gap, and it's the difference in the game for sure. Only the third field goal in the third quarter, uh, then another field goal by New England, and then the Duke Johnson touchdown gives them a lead, a uh, pretty sizable lead, and then the Johnny Smith touchdown gives the, the Patriots the edge in the end. Uh, but again, just a very fun game. Uh, Kellen Mond was not great in this one through three picks, but likely there's a difference uh, between them actually being able to win this as Kellen Mond has his first really bad game. Uh, Cam Newton was not great. Uh, he's been pretty good throughout the season, but uh, maybe the addition of Sam Darnold getting to him a bit, uh, having his first off game. But they are able to stay undefeated, so uh, all is not really lost for Cam Newton here. Um, then as the rushing attacks here, Damian Harris having a bit of a better week after last week. I think he struggled. Helen Hill goes down again. Uh, he's had injury issues this season. Uh, so Duke, or uh, David Johnson, able to pick up the slack and take up the carries for him with two rushing touchdowns. Uh, and then anything else of note? Long run of the day was eight yards, so uh, not terribly productive. Uh, and then for the receiving game, Jordan Atkins, or Atkins, Jacoby Myers getting after, Jarvis Landry having a nice game, Kiki Kuti. And then uh, overall, uh, Brandon Cooks as well. Uh, just a second, excuse me. Oh, C's coming on, sorry. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, for the rest of the receiving attack, uh, pretty balanced on the whole. Callan Hill did have the one long catch, but overall, a uh, pretty weird game. Uh, who, who could have uh, predicted that uh, into the um, defense here? Zach Cunningham, 11 tackles. Uh, JC Jackson with nine. Again, a corner, you don't love to see him having that many. Uh, but Two tackle for losses here. Overall, pretty clean, though. Sacks, there's four of them on the game. Uh, Hassan Reddick, Tryon, Uchi, and many of you. Uh, oh, Bolton also having a sack from the linebacker spot. Uh, then picks, Jason Jackson, Adrian Phelps getting the start at sub linebacker here with the Kyle Duggar injury, and the Jerry Sneed, um, who is worth a lot, or not a lot, I don't know. Uh, Rocky Asin, former Colt, able to get the pick off of Cam Newton for the Texans. Uh, but yeah, lots of returns. They have pretty good returns on all of them. Uh, pass deflections, Terrence Brooks, Zach Cunningham, uh, four stone goals, none of those. 
No blocks. And the safety was by Jacob Martin. So, yeah, very fun game for sure. Uh, probably not as fun for the Patriots having to, if they would have had to endure this one. But fun for me watching. Uh, but that's going to do it. See you guys on the next one. Ugly day here in Tampa, and the game reflects the weather as the final score is going to be 10-6 to in favor of the Buccaneers. Uh, both teams could not really get anything going uh, at all, actually, um, as they scored six points through three quarters, I believe. Uh, and then Miami takes the lead, but then it's Tom Brady, so he gets down, and he like activates into some sort of different mode, and he does uh, end up getting the touchdown to seal the game. Uh, so that being the only score of the day, uh, we'll take a look at the scoring summary to see how very little happened. We have a field goal in the first quarter, a field goal in the second, and then nothing until the field goal in the fourth. And then Mike Evans, touchdown pass from Tom Brady, being the deciding factor in this game. Uh, Dolphins had a couple chances to try to get into the end zone after that, uh, but didn't come particularly close on either attempt. Uh, as we look at the game score here, uh, neither quarterback playing clean, Tom Brady having a bunch more yards, uh, but throwing two picks in the game. Uh, did have the touchdown, and again, was the reason they ended up winning in the end. But Tua, not a very good game. Uh, didn't have the turnover, but didn't do anything big. Both quarterbacks did have yards on the table. Uh, and then for the rushing attack, they did lean on Najee, or they did lean on James Robinson, but neither of them delivered to the extent that they needed to be able to move the ball consistently, as rainy as the game was. Uh, then for the receiving game, Mike Evans, the best player in the game, uh, pretty comfortably with eight catches, 100 yards, and a touchdown. Mike Stecky was a solid option for Tua. Uh, Godwin was all right for the game. Sammy Watkins had two big catches, the maximum catch they allow in this right now. He had two of them, so... A lot of yards left on the table for him, I am sure. Uh, James Crowder was okay, uh, but overall, again, just an ugly game. Actually, not as many drops as I expected. There was not any drops, so um, that's kind of... Oh, there's one drop by Gaskin. Uh, but again, not uh, as many drops as I expected coming into this. Uh, but Jackson and Barry Tucker allowing a sack. Tackles, Goober Hill. Is he on the team coach? Yeah, whatever, I don't know. Uh, but uh, attack loss, Agua, Melvin Ingram. Christian Wilkins and Dom Sue, John Murphy Button, and a bunch of players at one. I guess I just shouldn't list the ones. But, uh, and then for sacks, Melvin Ingram with one, David and Barrett combining for one. So you got the picks. Bobby McCain and Gruger Hill got the picks. Uh, and then for Bowman returned pretty well, too. Xavier Howard with two pass questions, Winfield also with two, and a couple players at one. Then for the forced fumbles, David forced and recovered a fumble. Who did, uh, who had the fumble? I wonder. We'll go back to that. Uh, see if we can figure out who had the fumble. Okay, so it might have been on a kickoff. Uh, those you haven't shown because they didn't technically have a rush. Uh, so that probably is what happened. But yeah, ugly game. And, uh, you know, fitting for these teams sometimes. See you guys in the next one. What a game we have here. Uh, it started off all Packers. They might have jumped out 21 nothing, but the Bengals come roaring back uh, to almost take the lead in the first half, uh, at least for good. The Packers have a two-minute drill to take the lead, and then the Packers hold serve uh, in the second uh, half to be able to uh, put away the Bengals here. But they did put up quite the fight. A very good game for these Bengals. Uh, a game they weren't expected to win, but uh, for them to be as competitive as they were was certainly a positive sign, even though the division could get away from them, having not won this game. Take a look at the stats here, but I think early on, that Burrow pick likely ended up being very uh, difficult to overcome. Uh, we have the touchdown and the touchdown run and the field goal, so 17 nothing with the Adams uh, touchdown pass, but then it was Boyd, and then Mixon with touchdowns, a Crosby field goal, a Giovanni Bernard, Touchdown, but then this field goal here by Crosby gives them the lead heading into the half. And that is, again, all they need. Uh, the Pitts touchdown catch does give the Bengals the lead for quite a while, but the Aaron Jones uh, touched down with the two-point conversion. I think near the end they went for two instead of kicking a field goal. That or they missed one. Uh, we'll see in the stats they missed a kick, and we'll try to determine what that was if it is a missed kick. Uh, that could have tied the game, but that could have been for the win also if it wasn't the two-point conversion made. Uh, into the player stats here, Joe Burrow, uh, kind of recovering from what I think was an early pick and playing awesome uh, down the stretch, uh, really leading this team to be the chance to win. Uh, still a team that's maybe a year away, but 
again, great to see him playing so well. Rodgers was not quite as sharp, uh, but certainly uh, far away from a bad game for him. And both quarterbacks did have yards on the table, especially Rodgers on that uh, two-minute drive. It was like three plays it showed, but it was like 25-yard chunk, the ball be moved 30 yards. So um, definitely the yards left on the table for Rodgers specifically. Both running backs were awesome in this game. Honestly, if Mixon has more carries, you feel a lot better about where they stand in this game because they were up. So it's like you think, 9.4 yards per carry. Uh, he wasn't just sad that all. Uh, maybe he had one long run. Maybe that's what happened. Yeah, he had 19 yards run. That's right. Okay. Uh, yeah, never mind. That makes sense. He only averaged three yards per carry outside of the big one. Uh, but the longest run of the day being maybe the longest run of the season, a 92-yarder. So uh, Joe Mixon having the big play but not enough play-to-play -play consistency, which makes more sense than what I was thinking. There's no way you lose that game if you're getting nine yards a pop out of a running back when you're up. But... Uh, then we move into the receiving Devontae Adams, classic Devontae Adams game, nine catches, 111 yards, and a touchdown. Antonio Brown having a recovery game after struggling against the Steelers with 50 yards on six catches. Cal Pitts getting five catches and a touchdown. Uh, T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd also getting involved at about the same level. They've been very balanced in their passing attack. Uh, in the year this far, we have Aaron Jones touchdown, the Giovanni Bernard receiving touchdown, and then just a few other catches here. Let's see if we had any big... Drop amounts, two for Adams, so a lot more yards for him left on the table, and Boyd also having one. Uh, and we can go into Dillard allowing the only sack of the game. Von Bell, 11 tackles. Uh, Jesse Bates with five. Uh, Zadari Smith, three tackle for loss. Olivia Vernon, two. BJ Hill, two. Solomon Thomas with two. Solomon Thomas has been very good for them uh, throughout the year. Away getting involved, two uh, for the sacks. Uh, so they only allowed a couple, but... Uh, officially, I guess. But Von Miller with two sacks uh, off, coming off the edge. Renault Wren with the sack. BJ Hill, another sack. And then Trent Murphy of the full sacks. Pratt and Solomon Thomas combined for a half sack. Then William Jackson getting the interception. So playing much better here than he has been in real life this far in the season. So again, hopefully signs that he is a better fit here in uh, Green Bay. Uh, pass deflections, a few players at one. Uh, no forced fumbles in the game, no box, no safeties, and no touchdowns. We check the kicking here. Um, we want to start with the overall. Uh, then, yep, Randy Bolt did not attempt a field goal. So, I do believe they went for it on a fourth down there uh, and didn't get it. Um, maybe just thinking it was that out of range. I don't know about the wind and stuff like that. But Mason Crosby was very good, making him from every range he was giving the opportunity to. And uh, in the end, his efficiency ended up giving them enough to win the game. J.K. Scott also getting 55 yards per punt. Uh, what was his long? 72. That's got to be the longest punt of the year. Um, or at least up there. Uh, that does lend to the thing that there may have been a win finding a factor in this one. But that's going to do it for me. Uh, really exciting game. Uh, I've had a few of these so far, so I'm glad to see these games being very competitive and very well played uh, this week. Hopefully that trend continues into our next game. Ooh, baby. Talk about a game that, uh, as the Steelers owner, makes you want to uh, pull your hair out to start, for sure. Uh, Steelers do end up getting the win in this one, but, oh, God, they did not try to get the win in this one. Uh, really, it came down to the Broncos losing this one. Uh, they jumped out on the Steelers. Very comfortably jumped out on them. And, honestly, I'm, I'm very surprised that the game turned around at all. Uh, it did not look like it was going to. They jumped out 21 to nothing on the Steelers. And uh, it didn't even look like the Steelers came back very convincingly. But as you see, uh, they did the picks. Lakey played a part. Max Jones played a great game. Uh, also uh, ended up being a pretty uh, big difference for them. But again, right away. Uh, actually, it was more than 21. It was 24 to nothing. Uh, as OJ Howard, Freeman getting two touchdowns. Uh, and then the McManus field goal, 24 to nothing. And then the Thielen touchdown to give some kind of life. But then again, they shut the door again. 27 to 7 and a half, but then they do not score in the fourth quarter. The defense finally shows up for the Steelers as Claypool gets a touchdown catch. Malloy Cox, Adam Thielen with two touchdown catches on the day, and then the Boswell field goal to put the game out of reach. They did have a drive that went into the red zone near the end of the game. The Broncos did, but because they couldn't settle for a field goal to win it, uh, they did end up going for an out. Into the player stats, uh, Matt Jones with an awesome game. Uh, I mean, honestly, surprising as bad as their offense was that he didn't struggle more, but he turned it on, 
and is the reason they won this game. Honestly, uh, a lot of yards felt like they were left on the table um, because the ball moved around much more in chunk plays than this shows. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, on the other hand, having to throw the ball 47 times. Uh, I wonder why they didn't run it more. Uh, just throwing the ball that much uh, with the backup quarterback and Jacoby Brissett is not a great strategy to win the game. Uh, and that's kind of what I mean by the Broncos giving the game to the Steelers because they didn't really execute when they got up. Uh, but the two picks likely playing a huge role in that. Uh, but then 15 carries for Melvin Gordon. They weren't running the ball well, so it's not like I could say that they just went away from what was working. But that being said, you still can't have that. You can't you can't throw the ball that many times. It's good for set. Uh, Marlon Mack, again, this rushing offense of the Steelers is used a lot. Um, it has these amount of yards, but efficiency-wise, is not very strong. O.J. Howard, a great game. Jerry Judy also as well. Um, then the Adam Thielen game, really, for the Steelers. Two touchdown catches, seven catches, 91 yards. Uh, Claypool and Malloy Cox were also very good options for him. Uh, and then Deontay having quite a game um, as well. Uh, and then we can go into... I was like, the drops. Uh, Johnson getting a drop. <laughs> getting in there for a job. Nice. OJ Howard, Melvin Gordon, and KJ Hamler also having drops. And then for the Steelers, Minka with 11 tackles. Uh, kind of, I'm guessing early in the game, they kind of really rolled up on him. Uh, Callahan with nine. Tackle for loss, Draymond Jones continuing his uh, league leading run there. Uh, then for the sacks, TJ Watt only having one. The first team to not allow multiple sacks for TJ Watt. And they, I don't know who they're playing at right tackle. They don't have anybody intentionally at right tackle. So that's funny uh, for sure that the, the team least equipped to handle a TJ Watt is the team that most stopped him. Uh, but a couple extra sacks from Godshot and Strahd. Strahd? 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 Whatever. Uh, and then Osa and Cam Hayward combined for a stack up the middle. Uh, and then the picks, Tyree Gillespie getting in there. The rookie getting a pick. And Adoree Jackson continuing his awesome season. Uh, for the Steelers, uh, pass deflection, Sidney Jones and Cam Sutton. Sutton getting the start with the uh, Mike Hilton injury. He started in the slot. Uh, forced fumble, but it was not recovered by anybody listed here on the sack of Dan- or of uh, Matt Jones. I also said Daniel Jones. Uh, then Boswell did miss a 50-yarder. Uh, could have really changed the, com- the, the makeup of the game, but... He did make the one they needed him to. So Boswell able to put him out of reach, even though he was only one for two. And then, yeah, good game from both punters, really. They would get a lot of distance on their punts. Net average 47.6 for Presley Harbin is very impressive. Um, and then, yeah, that's going to do it for me today. Uh, he was escaped with a win. Uh, but the Broncos showing that they're not quite done with their season yet. Uh, two competitive games in a row against AFC North opponents. Uh, so, again, they haven't quite translated those to more wins, but they are right knocking on the door of having a uh, real chance in this division based off how they've been playing, uh, even with subpar quarterback play. So that will do it for me. I appreciate you guys for watching. And we have our last 1 p.m. game coming up between the Jaguars and the Titans. See you there. Well, there we have it. The Tennessee Titans are defeated no more. And with the result of our spotlight game having already been announced, that means there are no more winless teams left in the ACFL. Very surprising that the Titans were the last one left, but they are able to start digging out of the hole that they made for themselves by beating the Jaguars. But this game is going to be characterized by the Jaguars not being able to score in or around the red zone, but being able to score touchdowns. They kicked a lot of field goals in this game early on. They were up 12-3 to at one point. And if you can turn even one of those into a touchdown, you're put at a position where you're making the Titans be desperate. They never had to get desperate in this game. And it's because they could only take three points at a time until after the Titans scored a touchdown. So you have a slide field goal, which this is huge. This field goal is much bigger than it even seems because of how long it was early on. Um, but then it's just field goal, field goal, field goal. And then the Tim Patrick, Derrick Henry touchdowns. Uh, open the game up, and it's like, oh, we were winning, and now we're not. Uh, but then the Stevenson touchdown pass, they finally, you know, the Titans showed them they can get in the end zone, but the Titans closed the game, uh, scored the touchdown. They did have to get another stop, which they did. Uh, they couldn't kick a field goal, so they were able to hold them at about the 30-yard line. 
Uh, as we look into the game here, Gardner Minshew doesn't fake. Uh, Tannehill has a big game for the first time, but he did still throw two picks. So even while having a good game, he could not avoid the turnovers. Uh, I think early on that probably showed much more than later on in the game. Uh, they lost past 25. Again, likely that's the Arizona table. But Lawrence matching it with two turnovers himself uh, did not help the Jaguars' cause. He did not play nearly as good uh, around that. Um, just didn't have the touchdowns, I guess. Uh, Derrick Henry doing his thing, 121 yards against bad defense. Or uh, not good defense. Uh, that's what you expect to see out of Derrick Henry every week, and he gave it to him this week, and they needed it, every yard of it. Uh, Le'Veon Bell was fine uh, for the Jaguars. Um, but yeah, uh, overall, rushing attack's pretty solid, but the Titans doing their thing. LaVisca Chenault, uh, in place of, they traded away. Um, uh, why am I forgetting his name? Literally, was just talking about him. Okay, um, they traded away the slot receiver to give Chanel this opportunity, and he took advantage of it. Uh, John Brown getting the touchdown, Tim Patrick getting the touchdown as well, um, and Kenny Galladay having an all right game. DJ Chark, you'd like to see a lot more out of him. Um, but then as we move into the defense here, Josh Allen getting after it, two tackles for losses, 11 total tackles. Janoris Jenkins, Corn Short, and Moby Cooker, all tackles for losses. Chandler Jones getting two sacks. Miles Jack with one. Jeffrey Simmons with one. And Eric Armstead with one as well. The interceptions spread around here. Miles Jack, Desmond King, Jayon Brown, and Will Compton. All getting the interceptions, all taking pretty solid returns except for Compton. But you know, he's a linebacker. I'll give him a break. Desmond King was the only pass deflection of the game. No forced fumbles, no blocks, no, field, no safeties, no defensive touchdowns. There's barely any touchdowns to speak of. As we look at the field goals here, uh, did neither kicker miss one? I don't think they did. Neither kicker missed a field goal. Uh, just a very clean game, special teams wise, for them. Uh, it just came down to the fact that the uh, Jaguars needed too many of them. Really, that's what it comes down to. Uh, but that's going to do it here. Brad Kern had a nice game, 52.5 yards per 51 net average. So good to see him get going. Um, but that's going to do it. Titans win. No defeated teams and one undefeated team left in the ACFL. Wow. All I have to say is, wow. What a game. It started off a baseball game with a safety, a field goal, and a field goal. You know, we're just having nice innings. And then the Raiders looked like they were too much for the Bears. Came out, jumped out to, I think, a 14-point lead. Uh, they looked like they are going to be able to take control. The Bears kind of creep back in near the middle of the fourth. But then a long, long drive where the Raiders looked to ice the game. They kick a field goal. And then in 30 seconds or less, Ben Rossford drives the Bears back down the field scores a touchdown, gets the two-point conversion to bring it to overtime. They get the stop and then get the touchdown to end the game. Absolutely awesome game to watch. Uh, as you see here, the safety, then the field goal, then the field goal, then the touchdown pass from Renfro. I thought maybe they weren't going to score touchdowns in this one, but uh, Derek Carr and Hunter Renfro were too much to handle in this middle part of the game, like I mentioned. And then there's the Anthony Miller touchdown pass, but they answer right back. It's like, okay, it's, you know, it's done. You know, they're not going to be able to come back. And then the answer with the Dave Montgomery touchdown to bring it uh, to within a score. Uh, but then the Daniel Carlson 47-yard field goal uh, puts it to a eight-point game. And then the Allen Robinson from Ben Hall's for a touchdown pass with almost no time remaining. Uh, and the two-point conversion to bring it to overtime, and then the Anthony Miller touchdown pass, the second of the game from Ben Roethlisberger to win the game. Uh, this is what you brought Ben Roethlisberger in to do, is win these kind of games where your defense couldn't sh completely shut down a team, and they finally did it. Chicago Bears are in it in the NFC North and in the NFC wild card race. Uh, it was a very encouraging game to see from them. Both quarterbacks, though, played well. Alec Ingold uh, also playing well as a quarterback. Uh, you just love to see this sort of stuff. <laughs> um, I don't know why he hits fast at that. Um, but both quarterbacks moving the ball efficiently, not turning the ball over. Ben with three touchdowns, Carr with two. Uh, both very similar in yards. Um, both had a lot of yards left on the table, big plays that uh, couldn't get fully counted. Uh, rushing attacks for neither team were very good. Ben Rossford, the most efficient runner in the game. Everybody would have predicted that to be the case coming in, uh, for sure. 
Um, then the Kenyon Drake and Montgomery touchdowns. Uh, Josh Jacobs has really struggled to get things going thus far in the year. Uh, kind of something to keep an eye on. Uh, if this team can get him going. Uh, they haven't needed him yet, but coming in, they probably will. Jimmy Graham, 10 catches, 75 yards. Allen Robinson, 6 catches, 65. And the big uh, game uh, deciding touchdown, really, because they got a chance to win it. Uh, our game, we get six standing. I shouldn't say deciding. Miller had the deciding one. Uh, Darnell Mooney was good. Renfro, not quite as good after that hot stretch in the middle. Uh, and maybe I thought, I thought he'd be at 100 yards. But still a very good game for Hunter Renfro. No complaints at all. From there. Zach Pascal was very good. Even he did have the drop. Uh, Kenyon Drake having 63 receiving yards as a running back. Huge spark for them. Josh Jacobs also getting involved. There's two drops. Zach Pascal and Josh Jacobs with the drops. Uh, then into the game here, Khalil Mack, 13 tackles, a tackle for loss, and two sacks. Great game for him, Sean Gibson, and Roquan, Corey Littleton, and Trey Waynes, all having over 10 tackles. So a bunch of offensive plays in this one. Carl Nassif, three tackles for losses and two sacks. Awesome game for sure for him. Uh, then into the sacks, Farrell also getting two sacks with the tackle for loss. Very nice game for him as well. Uh, and Nico Autry also providing a sack. So the Raiders really got after things. I was right end, but uh, Khalil Mack likely is the one who got the safety. He's maybe our culprit on that one. Uh, any deflections, Jalen Johnson and Roquan Smith getting pass deflections. No forced fumbles, no block punts. The safety was by Robert Quinn, maybe on a tackle for loss. Uh, then the touchdowns, no touchdowns on defense. Let's take a look at the kicking. I don't think either kicker missed one. Oh, Carlson missed one. That's a rare miss for him. Uh, so, uh, did he miss one in overtime, I wonder? Or was it in the game? I don't know for sure. Maybe he did miss one in the overtime. That's rough. They wouldn't have won the game if they started the ball. Uh, because they still would have had the touchdown allowed. So, uh, that's something to be disappointed by. But in the end, it did not end up changing the outcome of the game. Unless it happened in regulation. Then it very much did. <laughs> but... Yeah, exciting game, for sure. I did not think the comeback was possible, but uh, the Bears proving that uh, sometimes it doesn't have to be possible for it to happen. But that's going to do it for me. Uh, this is our start of our 4 p.m. games here on the recap. we got two more to go here. We're going to head over to the West uh, to take on the Cardinals and uh, 49ers. Again, quite the showing here for the Arizona Cardinals. This game started off a lot similar to the uh, game last week where they jumped out and then kind of let the other team back in it, and then pulled away at the end. Uh, just kind of a very similar giving take uh, for this team as we look into the scoring summary here. They jump out, again, really early. Christian Kirk and Ronald Jones touchdowns, uh, and then Robbie did the second quarter, all San Francisco, Robbie Gold, the Depot Samuel touchdown, the Mostert run, but then in the second half flips right back to the Cardinals with the Hopkins touchdown, uh, the Saquon Barkley 29-yard run, and another Christian Kirk touchdown. Then a little cherry on top of the game, the Kyler Murray, six-yard touchdown run. Looking at the player stats, Kyler Murray, uh, just awesome. Perfectly efficient, 142.2 rating, only four incompletions to three touchdowns, no picks, 25 yards, a lot of yards left on the table for him. Justin Fields was not bad, uh, and that's a lot you can say against a good defense like this in a week where things clearly didn't go their way. I uh, was able to play well, uh, just not quite well enough to keep – he paced with this offense, uh, but that's fine. If they're rolling, you're not really expecting to. Uh, you need a little more on your defense in this one. But Justin Fields was fine. Saquon was amazing. Seven yards per carry on 17 attempts. Uh, Mostert was not good. Coleman was not good. Kyler Murray was good in the running game. So everything the Cardinals were doing was working in this game. Uh, and that just shows in the scoreboard here for sure. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, eight catches, 132 yards and a touchdown. Brandon Ayuk. Seven catches, 42 yards. Debo Samuel, six catches, 64, and a touchdown. Christian Kirk did not have a lot of yards, but did have the two touchdowns. Saquon getting involved a little bit. Uh, not a lot of Julio Jones in this one after having a huge last week. Two catches and six yards. Picked up for by Hopkins having such a huge week. Uh, and then going into the defense here, DeMario Davis having 11 tackles. Fred Warner with eight. Trent Danish Grayson with nine. Uh, then Leonard Williams leading away with two tackles for losses here. A bunch of players sitting at one and four sacks. D. Ford and Harold Landry each with two. Uh, then Byron Murphy gets the interception off of Fields. Pass collections. Uh, Lattimore and Akella Witherspoon join him. 
Uh, no forced fumbles, no blocked, no safeties, and no touchdowns. Not good with the kicking real quick. And pretty much a clean game as far as uh, offenses taking advantage of the opportunities. No field goals attempted by the Cardinals. No such points and only one by the 49ers. So that's going to do it here. Uh, lots of punts for the Niners there in the middle. That defense really picked it up and uh, took over the game. So uh, this, we have one more game left to recap here on our four uh, PM slates. I will see you there. So unfortunately, our last two games of the recap here, at least of that are being revealed on this, were not terribly close. The Cowboys uh, struggled early on a little bit, uh, but able to run the doors off them in the second and third quarter. I think that pick was thrown pretty early by uh, Dak. And uh, in the end, it wasn't close. Uh, teams just on different levels. The Giants had some injuries this week in practice that they couldn't overcome. Uh, but um, they didn't give up. You know, they stayed in the game fought through it uh, and played decently well near the end, but it was just, it was all Cowboys in this middle, as you'll see here. Um, the Graham Gano and the Uzoma touchdown, just uh, back-to-back pretty much, but then the Pollard touchdown, Cooper touchdown, Amari Rogers touchdown, Dalton Schultz touchdown, and that's that's a killer run for sure. And then New York gets a field goal, but like, oh, hey, we got a chance. Touchdown, field goal, and then they do score a garbage time touchdown. Uh, to Shepard. So again, Neil Jones able to get something going near the end, but overall, a much better Dak Prescott game. I've been waiting for this from him to have the kind of game like this. Uh, not terribly efficient, did throw the pick, but four touchdowns, good passer rating. Uh, it's definitely the game you need to see from him. Daniel Jones, uh, not quite as good of a game as he's had before. Um, like we do, just not having the touchdown volume that he's had in other games, uh, and just not completing it enough of his passes. Uh, but having uh, Slayton down surely hurts that. Another great deep game, uh, five yards per carry. The Giants down. Mike Davis couldn't get any running attack going. Uh, and then, yeah, overall, both teams were committed to the run. Uh, just the Cowboys were more so and much more effective when they did it. Uh, then into the receiving, Amari Cooper, 90 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Shepard with four catches, 69 yards and a touchdown. C.D. Lamb getting a touchdown as well as Amari uh, Rogers. But again, yardage was pretty low in this one. Uh, something that's a little bit surprising. Uh, based off of how well the ball moved, but again, uh, just kind of one of those uh, things with this uh, uh, Tim, you know, I guess. Uh, anyway, into the tackle, Xavier McKinney getting in there, getting 10 tackles, uh, going to the tackle for losses here to Marcus Lawrence, getting the ball with two, Edmund Sertain, uh, Ogan Ju- Joby, and Bradbury also getting tackle for losses here, Ogan Joby. Gregory and DeMarcus Lawrence all having a sack. Peppers and Van Der Esch getting interceptions in the game. Uh, pass deflections, certain, and then a whole host of players at one. Lots of pass defense in this one. Uh, forced fumbles that were done in this one. No blocks, no safeties, no touchdowns. So, uh, again, take a look at the kicking here. Graham Gano, two for two on 50 yarders. Uh, just a great game for the kicker. He did what he could for this one. Um, but yeah, um, what a week. Uh, another successful week, fully simulated here. I uh, have a recap of the primetime games and broadcast games that we've done so far coming up. So that will be our wrap-up of the week. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, I'm here uh, wrapping up our week five. Uh, as you can see, I haven't simmed the rest of the games yet, but I'd like to get a recap in on our primetime games, kind of close up our week. Here uh, to start, uh, we're going to work backwards because I did record Monday Night Football. I don't want to show that accidentally because this is airing before Monday Night Football. It's kind of a lead-in. So as you see here, we have the Bills uh, taking on the Chiefs. The Bills are able to top them here. We just watched that game uh, last night. Uh, Josh Allen was very good, uh, as was Patrick Mahomes. Uh, both players did throw a pick. Uh, Josh Allen's was kind of a difference between them blowing him out from the beginning. And Patrick Mahomes' pick kind of ended any hopes of a comeback there in the fourth quarter, but overall very good game, very well played, a uh, little bit lower scoring than I anticipated, but um, still very good one for sure. Uh, Cleveland at the Chargers here, that was our game of the week, Aaron right before, uh, Cleveland's able to take a 14-6 to uh, win there, I think the Chargers really missed a lot of opportunities in this game, uh, they definitely had a shot to uh, win this one, and they also did not execute well at all. Um, just a very bad game for them, but Cleveland also had a few extra chances that they didn't take advantage of, so this game could have really gone either way. 
as far as being a blowout uh, or the Chargers winning, depending on how those things fall uh, differently. But overall, I think basically every opportunity was missed, except for a couple of drives of the Cleveland offense and really Nick Chubb being amazing. Then into our spotlight game, the Eagles at the or yeah, Eagles at the Panthers here, and the Eagles just dominant throughout. Um, it was ugly to start for sure, but the Eagles defense really showed that they came out to play uh, and really were all over this Panthers offense. Nothing much doing at all for this team. Uh, and then on the offensive end, the Eagles were able to move the ball pretty well. Um, they did have their first drive. They ended up going for it and didn't get points, but uh, for the most part, this Eagles offense was far better uh, than expected, and the Eagles defense very similarly in this game. Uh, they even got a safety near the end to uh, get him to 20, so can't have anything that's not weird enough. Uh, then into the Jets versus the Falcons, our special London game being played here. Um, as you see, Atlanta able to take this one. Uh, the Jets did try to make a comeback near the end, uh, but their offense just didn't wake up quick enough. Uh, they had a late touchdown, a great throw from uh, Zach Wilson, uh, but just it was too little too late on that one. Uh, and then both quarterbacks not playing particularly well uh, in this one. Uh, both players are playing fine. I wouldn't want to say they're bad, but uh, a couple of turnovers, a couple should have been turnovers. And uh, yeah, just overall not a very clean game. Uh, very rainy too, very weird wind. Uh, and then Thursday night, Seattle is going to take a temporary lead in the division as they are the only 3-2 and two team, but we will see who gets the leader of this. Or we've already seen it, I guess. At this point, but uh, Seattle will be in second place in the division after a 31 to 17 victory over the Rams. The Rams offense is looking still a mess. A uh, lot to figure out there. Their only touchdown in the first three quarters, I think, was the Aaron Donald's fumble recovery touchdown. And then on the other side, Jamal Adams. What can you say? Two forced fumbles. I mean, he really, really played well. Uh, and showed why he was worth the money and the picks. So that's going to do it for us this week. Hope you guys enjoy Monday Night Football, a uh, big match between the Colts and the Ravens, two teams trying to find their footing in this league. Uh, here as they're sitting at 2-2, two and two, right on the balance. Both teams have a shot in their division and just hoping to keep pace. Uh, so yeah, that's going to do it. I don't know who's going to be on the call, but hopefully uh, it's a good one.